turn, if you stand up and sharpen your pencil, if you turn around and look at the person behind you, if you flip pages, you get check marks. All of these check marks are being tallied. It's called response to intervention. It's called positive behavior intervention and support. It's called functional behavioral assessment. This is what is happening right now. And trust me, we can document every piece of this, every single piece. At this time, I am writing a legal brief. I am not an attorney, but I know what violations are happening besides privacy, besides the protection of pupil rights amendment that says you can't test and score and treat attitudes. Uh, civil rights. What about our constitutional rights that says we have the right to be left alone? The right to our individual thoughts. I am writing this legal brief that explains what had happened with all the documents behind it saying this is how they're going to do it. This is how they're going to do it. And it's a decision-making model. You will no longer have the ability to say no. There's one more step that's even more horrible than what I just said. As they're doing this in the classroom, this reauthorization, the No Child Left Behind, okay, they're going to redo it. What is in there is they're saying now that, remember I said Title I identifies your child and it's every child? Right. That Title I child, they are going to give funding, what they are saying, that will follow the child. So now you have Title I funds that follow the child. So in this piece of legislation, it says we're going to offer choice to Title I children. Okay, so let's think about that. What does that mean? Every child is Title I. Every child is going to be funded where the money follows the child. This is the biggest state rights violation that you can think of. If the federal money is going to go directly to the child, guess what? It totally bypasses state government. So when everyone's out there saying, yes, I want choice, I want to get out of that public school, right? I want to get away from the government. Well, you know what? The government has you covered. They're going to give you Title I. And guess what happens? When your child is Title I, now it's no longer Title I is for books in the Catholic school. It's Title I is your child. Okay, so now your child is going to take that little stipend or voucher or whatever you want to call it, walk into your Catholic school, private school, Christian school, whatever school, and Common Core walks right in with it. Because they have to ultimately teach to the outcomes that are desired. Absolutely. And you see, and, and it's not like in the past where Title I funded the book. Okay. Now Title I follows the child. So if a Catholic school says, no, I don't want you, that would be the biggest discrimination suit of the year. Okay. You cannot deny a child access. This is the equity, the equity in education that Obama was talking about. Yeah. Okay. We're going to make everybody equal. And what about credentialing in, but, but, but this has been the dream of the educrats for 50 years, you know, since World War II. They've been talking about this as a long-term goal. But, but now credentialing is becoming an issue. You know, we're seeing credentialing, say, in British Columbia as far as whether certain law colleges there abide with the politically correct standards rather than teaching their own curricula. This seems to be the ace in the hole. You will not be able to move up through the system unless you conform. And you realize that all freedom here is lost. All innovation is lost. The government determines what you must teach and know and think. And if you don't do it, you're stuck. Well, and they've changed the higher ed criteria. And all you have to do is look under the Lumina Foundation. They've created the new diploma for college, which includes all of the affective domain standards that I just talked about. Okay, so in, in the authorization, in the reauthorization, it says that children will be, let me see if I can say the exact word, college and career ready without remediation. Okay, what that means is what I just said. You have to abide by all the common core or you're going to have to stay there forever. Okay. 
your child will be remediated no matter what, or you will not be able to move forward. So what we're saying is we're moving toward a national diploma, which was set out in the SCANS report. You know, at that time it was called the Certificate of Initial Mastery. Now it's going to be a national accrediting uh, readiness accreditation to move on to college. So you're exactly right. But the problem that you have now in state legislatures, now we have, where I live now in Idaho, is probably one of the most conservative states in the country, and yet our head of education for the state is just marching right along with this in a supposedly very... Most of very, them are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of them are. If it's not the governor who is implementing it, it's your secretary of ed. And this is what's really very serious. Anita Hogue, what we need to do, let me do a station break. Well, it's actually different than that. We're going to say goodbye to all of our broadcast audience, but we want to finish out this conversation on the whole Common Core curriculum and how it ties in with all of the long-term educational agendas with Anita Hogue. We'll do that online as the first part of our Section 6 Intelligence Brief. That's at steelonsteel.com, where you can join us for a host of materials on the website. You can find Anita Hogue's materials simply by uh, Googling Anita Hogue, H-O-G-E. There will be a wealth of her articles on this subject. Do remember, if you would, pray for us for provision and protection. Pray for those suffering for their faith around the world. And also pray for those who are in charge of your own particular government. We'll return with this conversation with Anita Hogue online at our podcast at steelonsteel.com. Do follow us on Facebook. I'm John Lefter. The program is Steel on Steel. Really important information because you need to understand that the outlook of the educrats that began back in the 1980s and moved forward was to completely transform society. That's what they've been talking about, this transformation of America that President Obama talks about. Well, what are we transforming from and into and what will it look like? And Pat Wood, and like I said, we're going to have Pat Wood here on the show. I'm not sure exactly will it be next week or the week after, but... We're going to be talking about the idea of this oligarchic dictatorship and what it is is an army of unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats all monitoring everything that we're doing through an intense series of computer processing crunching going on. That's what it's looking like right now, the way everyone's talking and the way technology is moving. Technology is not necessarily intrinsically evil in and of itself, but this is where we're headed. And so you have to face it. Anyway, back with Anita Hogue. We're going to spend about 10 more minutes with Anita Hogue, and then we'll have a full one-hour Section 6 briefing. This is really part of Section 6. Welcome back to Steel on Steel. John Leffler here with you. All right, Anita, you wanted to address something else. I'll just let you have the floor on this part of the conversation. Something I do want to go back to to make sure people understand what I meant by if you Google ABCs of Dumb Down and put property tax in there, I wanted to just finish that thought. So. If you're going to have that Title I money that follows the child and that child is going to, well, actually what's going to happen, there will be an exodus out of public school, right? If everyone can go whatever they want, everyone gets Title I money or their, their children are Title I yeah. children. Yeah, people want a better education. They're going to go where they can get it. And they're going, there's going to be an exodus out of public school. What happens to your school district when there's an exodus of children out of your public school? And your public school has elected school board members. And your elected school board members in most states, although some it's already moved to the state, they control the levies or whatever, or bonds or whatever is happening, and your property taxes. What's going to happen when your public school folds? Because that's what's going to happen. Your public school will fold. So what is in Senator Lamar Alexander's bill that is their little designer basket of what's going to happen. They are expanding huge. There's huge amount of pages in the reauthorization to expand charter schools. So people think, well, what's so bad about charter schools? Well, first of all, charter schools don't have elected boards. They're public schools, but they do use public funds. So you have charter schools has some sort of nonprofit bureaucratic person that authorizes them uses public funds but they don't have elected school board this is the agenda yeah so at this point parents are losing all control of what's taught to their kids and their options are going to be closed out you can see this absolutely yeah this is the agenda the agenda is to absolutely demolish the destruction 
have representative government. This is it. They're doing this through education. It is education that will be used to kill the republic. And no one's hardly even looking at it. No one's even looking at education. No one's looking at the reauthorization. No one's looking at what Lamar Alexander plans to do to this country. But this is the plan. And if this plan goes through, which is on a very fast track, believe me, it will just, I don't know how many years. I can, I, it will be my opinion, what, four years, five years, that you will have the complete destruction of having a voice, having any kind of remedy or recourse as to what is happening to the future of this country. You will have none. So in Pennsylvania, they brought, and this is really interesting, they brought forward a bill about two weeks ago saying, oh, well, we want all our property taxes to go to the state. And I just about had another heart attack saying, this is what we fought for in the Revolutionary War. The further away that you are being taxed from, the worse it's going to be. That's why we fought the war. We had England taxing the colonists, saying, you're going to have to give us this money to do whatever, okay? And they weren't even here. So here's the colonists being taxed on all of these different things, and it was taxation without representation. We can't forget that. Taxation without representation. Exactly what is being done in the education of our children. So going back to where, you know, when you talked about the Department of Labor and was a dumbing down process, you realize that the scans report, that Department of Labor document, says they want two things. Functional literacy, number one, and number two, you have to have the right attitude. This all goes back to, and I know you remember this, when I filed my federal complaint against the Pennsylvania Department of Ed, that was resolved in 1990. And I think perhaps this is why I understand so much of what is going on, because I was put through the war back then. I was the one who had the scars on my back fighting the Pennsylvania Department of Ed when they were the model for the national assessment, the National Assessment of Educational Progress. So our test, the Pennsylvania EQA, was the prototype for the testing of attitudes, values, opinions, and beliefs. Now, when they said back then that they were going to test citizenship, and all the parents said, yeah, that's great. We want our kids to be good citizens. We want them to be honest. We want them to vote, right? This is what we want. We want good citizens. But we found out what they were doing. They were testing what they called, and this is a little bit scientific, but people will understand. They were testing the psychological notion of threshold by reward and punishment. Let me explain. B.F. Skinner. B.F. Skinner, yeah, B. F. Skinner right. right. Yeah. And those were their words, not mine. Okay, the psychological notion of threshold. When will your child change by reward and punishment? And I have the test. Okay, I have the scoring. They scored it toward collectivism. You had to go along with the group. It was group effort, group goals, and uh, following, following. You have to be a follower to go along with the group. And how I got this, I freedom of information to my own federal complaint. So I got everything that the Pennsylvania Department of Ed had given the Fed whenever I filed my federal complaint so that when I got the document, it had all the testing, the scoring, the evaluation. It said how they were doing it, how they were going to score attitudes. And it was in 10 different attitudinal areas. Okay, it wasn't just citizenship. It was self-esteem. Are you internally influenced or externally influenced? Do you go along with the group? And you know that becomes so scientific, they incorporate this stuff into the reading. Yeah, basically it's it's a whole integrated curriculum so that these yeah. ideas are, so in reading classes or in math class, you'll have math problems that convey this. You're being indoctrinated even while you're doing the, the math tests. Absolutely. 